Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Heather from BrickHouseVintageDIY.com and today we're going to be painting this little vintage record cabinet with Miss Mustard Seed milk paint. So let's get going. The first thing we're going to do with this project is remove this vintage door handle and the latch system that's inside here. And we're just going to get that off so that we have a clean starting point here to start working on this piece and we're not going to mess up this little door handle. So now we're going to clean the whole piece with a little bit of Dawn dish soap and warm water in a spray bottle and we'll just scrub it down and spray again and scrub it down again. It was very, very dirty and it kind of smelled a little funky. So we wanna make sure that we really do a good job getting this nice and clean. And once we have it all cleaned up, we're gonna spray it with just some plain water and dry it off with a blue shop towel. And that's just to make sure that we don't have any soapy residue left on the piece that's gonna mess with the paint. So there was a little piece right down here on the corner where there was a piece of missing veneer. So Ethan's just gonna use a little Bondo wood filler for me and fill that in so I have a nice smooth surface to start painting on. With Bondo, you're just gonna mix the two different um, components. You mix them up and then you just use it to fill in whatever you need to fill in. So he is going to fill this little missing piece of veneer. And if you'd like to have any more information about missing veneer or fixing broken pieces of veneer, we actually have a whole video about that. And you can check that out. We'll put the card right up here. After about 15 to 20 minutes, you can go back and use a piece of sandpaper and just smooth it all out. We are gonna use Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint in the color Typewriter, and that's just a black milk paint. And it makes a really pretty finish. And you mix it one to one, one parts water with one part powder and stir it up with a spoon or a whisk, whatever you've got. And then you're just gonna wanna let this sit for five to 10 minutes and let those pigments absorb all of the water and then you'll be able to really see what your true consistency is. So while that's happening, Ethan is gonna tape this off for me. I was planning on just freehanding it and being reckless, but Ethan is a lot more precise than I am and he said, no way, I'll tape this off for you. So he's a good balance to my uh, reckless side. Now, I do not want this piece to chip at all. I want this to have almost like a vintage chalkboard feel to it. So I'm gonna put this Ultra Grip in, it's a bonding agent. And this is also, I believe, one part bonding agent to one part paint, but I don't ever put that much. I just kinda eyeball it again. And then I'm gonna check the consistency and add a little bit extra paint. I don't mind if it chips a little bit, but I don't want it to be like crazy chippy because I do really want that chalkboard feel to this piece. So now you're gonna paint it on and you'll know right away when you're painting if the paint feels right. It is going to be, milk paint is always kind of a thinner consistency than regular paint that you'd be used to working with. You do want it to go on and actually cover what you're painting. Now this was a little bit chunky still when I started painting so I just gave it another stir. And you're gonna find that when you're painting with milk paint, um, it will start to get a little bit chunkier as you're working with it and you just have to stop and give it a stir every once in a while and maybe spray in a little bit of water if you keep a little water misting bottle there and that'll keep the consistency nice and even for you. So we're gonna do one full coat on this whole piece and you can see it has really nice coverage so we mixed it pretty well, but it is, milk paint is a little bit more prone to dripping so you just wanna kinda make sure as you go that it's not dripping anywhere. If you do have a drip that you miss, it'll be easy to sand back off, but I try and make sure that I don't leave any drips.
And we're gonna really try and work it into these little crevices and the detail here. And then if you noticed, I was kind of going like with the detailing, but I went back and did long brush strokes over it so that it doesn't have like those rounded strokes around the applique there. And here's where we did the Bondo. I just wanted to show you that up close, how nicely the milk paint goes over it. You're just gonna wanna be careful if you're distressing a piece with Bondo underneath that you don't distress where the Bondo was because that will obviously be a different color than the rest of the wood showing through. And I am using my zebra paintbrush today. This is my newest paintbrush, and I really like the way that this particular paintbrush fits in my hand when I'm painting. I get less hand cramps. And when you're painting a lot of furniture, I know it sounds silly, but the way the brush feels in your hand really does make a difference. And I also painted the back of this piece. I usually paint the backs of all of our pieces. I don't think I ever mentioned that, so I just wanted to mention that we do paint the backs of most of our pieces. Now, as you can see, this piece is fully painted right now with a first coat, and it does look streaky and crazy, and there's a fly. <laughs> it does look streaky and crazy, and that's okay. The first couple times I painted with milk paint, I thought, oh no, what did I do? And you can see parts where we missed, and it didn't dry quite evenly. It's perfectly fine, it's totally okay. Don't worry about it, what it looks like right now. Just get your paintbrush out and keep on painting that second coat is gonna make a world of difference. And I'm really gonna make sure to work it into this detail again, because there are a lot of places where I couldn't see that I had missed the first time. And this only took two coats. Usually I only do two coats when I'm using the black milk paint. Sometimes with white, uh, well, with a lot of white paints, you need more than two coats, but with the darker colors, two is usually just fine and dandy. Now we want to make sure we get this little lip in here because when this door is closed, there's kind of a little bit of a gap, so you want to make sure you get enough that you don't see anything jarring. All right, so that's the full second coat, and here it is dry, or almost dry. And you can see there's a little bit of variation in the color, and I mustn't have mixed it well enough the second time. There's a little bit of white showing here. Those are just the pigments from the milk paint, but that's totally okay. That's just gonna add to that chalkboard effect, and I want this to look old, so you can see the cracking and a little bit of the lumpiness. I want this to look old, so that's okay. Now Ethan is going to sand it, and this is where the magic kind of happens, where you take your piece and you make it look like it is truly old. And this is something that you can only really get this look with milk paint. That's what I love so much about milk paint, and I can't say it enough, is you can get that true, old, antique look with milk paint that you just can't get with any other paint. So he's gonna hit this whole thing with his orbital sander, all of the flat areas. And this gives the paint such a smooth feel too. Now 
you know, anything he couldn't get with the orbital sander, he's gonna go back with this uh, 220 grit sandpaper and he's gonna touch up this applique here and any spots he couldn't reach with the sander. And distressing really is uh, like a personal choice. Some people like to distress heavier, some people like to go lighter. I feel like the piece of furniture is really what dictates for us how heavy we're gonna distress it or not distress it. Now he is going to take some Rust-Oleum stain and just touch up these back areas inside. It's not gonna totally cover it, but it's just kind of gonna blend in these areas where the wood was showing um, and the finish was kind of worn off. And he's gonna rub the stain all over the inside. Like I said, it was a little bit stinky. This is kind of gonna seal in the stink, any residual stink that was in there and make it smell better. All right, so we are gonna wax this and I lied. This is really where the magic happens. There's nothing like wax on milk paint. We're gonna rub the furniture wax in. This is Miss Mustard Seed Furniture Wax. And you really wanna make sure that you put a lot on because milk paint is dry and it is thirsty. And this is what really brightens it up and brings it to life. And there's a lot of things you can seal milk paint with. If it's not chippy, you can use hemp oil to seal it. Um, if it is really chippy, you can use, they make um, a top coat that you can use to seal it in but my personal preference is to use the furniture wax. I just love the feel and I like the actual look of it. I think it feels more vintage than when you put like a poly over it. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda work the wax in all over. I rub all different directions and really kinda work it into the paint because like I said, it's very thirsty. And once you get it on all over the piece, you can get a dry um, blue shop towel or lint-free cloth, whatever you're using, and you're gonna buff it back off. And I kind of work in sections and then go back and buff a little, get all the excess off, then come back again and buff again. And you can do two coats of the wax depending on uh, how durable you want the finish to be. So here I'm gonna start the buffing process, just getting a little bit of the excess off, and then I'll let it dry a little bit and come back with a clean towel and really give it a super good buffing and feel it. There's nothing like the way the wax feels. Uh, it's hard to describe. It almost feels like you're touching um, like a bar of soap or a candle, but it has a really smooth, soft finish to it. I just love it. All right, so here's a side-by-side -side of what it looked like when we started and what it looks like now. And I think we kind of achieved that, uh, that chalkboard look because the black isn't like all one solid color. It's kind of a variation and it looks old and it looks like a chalkboard and I just love it. I think it turned out perfect. It's just how I envisioned it to be. And I love when you paint the black milk paint over the reddish pieces of furniture and you could see that red wood shining through. It's just a perfect combo. shot of the inside thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this milk paint makeover if you did please hit that subscribe button and stick around we'll have a new video out next week in the meantime you can check out these projects right here see ya